Basically, this thing turned out exactly the way I wanted it. I love it so much. Just a little bit of pop of rainbow and a thunderstorm. That's basically it. What is up everybody and welcome back to Alt Knots. Welcome to another day here in the Yarn Dungeon where we are gonna make this amazing crochet cardigan for Pride. So when I was designing my entire fit for Pride, I was like, absolutely I need a cardigan. Do not care that it's June, it's a million degrees outside right now, but I need a cardigan. Honestly, for every outfit, I have to have a cardigan. So I knew I needed it to be like a light, something that draped really nicely and moved with your body and wasn't like super heavy and bogged you down. So I decided to use the mesh stitch here and I feel like it turned out super killer. Not only is it light and airy, but like I said, how it drapes, how it flows in your body, it just screams summer. Another thing is that there's only two stitches that we end up using. So like the mesh stitch and single crochet, that's basically it. So this is a nice and beginner friendly type of crochet cardigan as well. I ended up using Big Twist Yarn for the entire project here and even though it is a medium weight yarn it doesn't feel like that because there is so much space in between each stitch you're able to create something that is super super light but it's also nice and bulky and it feels really soft honestly and I love all the colors that they offered as well so for the sleeves here for your flag there's a lot of different colors that you can go ahead and choose from but I'm excited to make another one here so let's learn this together if you are excited as well leave a comment down below leave a little black heart leave a rainbow something to let me know you're excited I'm gonna get my materials together and let's make this thing so here is a list of all the things that I used in order to create this pride cardigan here um, obviously everyone is gonna be different since it's a customizable project for how much yarn that you're gonna need to go through but just for reference I ended up using two skeins of the black and the other three colors I only ended up using a half a skein of all of them and then all of the measurements that you're gonna have to take in order to create each piece for the cardigan. If you are interested in a written version of this entire pattern, I did create a PDF version and that is linked down below for you to go ahead and check out. Starting off, go ahead and attach the yarn onto your hook. Then using the measurement that you took for the back panel, go ahead and chain the amount of chains until you've reached that measurement. Next, working in the fourth chain from your hook, so one, two, three, four, place a double crochet. Then chain one. Then we're gonna skip this next stitch and place a double crochet in the following stitch. And you can see right there, that's already starting to look a little bit like the mesh stitch. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that all the way across for the foundation row chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next stitch. So do that all the way across for your foundation chain. Now we're gonna keep on making that mesh stitch here. As you can see, this is kind of what it starts to look like, which is super fun. And we're gonna be working right in the top there of that double crochet. So since we chained four already, that is actually counted as our first mesh stitch. So this very first one, we're not gonna work in, but we're gonna yarn over to do a double crochet right in the top of that next double crochet. So right through there, finish up that double crochet, then just continue doing the mesh stitch as normal all the way across. So we'll chain one, and we're basically skipping this one here. We're skipping this chain space and doing a double crochet right in the top of that next double crochet. And that's what you're gonna do all the way across for row number two. When you get to the end of the row here, you are gonna actually work into this last chain four space. So you're gonna double crochet and work right into that space to complete the row. So this is what it should start to look like. Then we're just gonna repeat everything we did for row number two and row number three. So chain four and turn your project. Then start to work the mesh stitch all the way across. Remembering that our chain four does count as our first mesh stitch, so we don't need to go into that one. We're gonna work into that next double crochet. Just like that. So you're just gonna continue to repeat row number two as many times as you need in order to build up the length of your back panel here. And this is the same exact process that you're gonna use for the front two panels as well. So using the measurement for the front two panels, you're gonna follow exactly what we just did. We created our foundation chain and then started working our mesh stitch and build all the way up to the measurement of the length that you want for your front panel. 
When it comes to the two sleeves, we are going to be crocheting flat, so not in the round. And basically we're doing the same exact thing. So we're going to start with a foundation chain and build up our mesh stitch once again. But I'm going to show you how to go ahead and change your color when it's time to do that. So setting out the amount of colors that you want here, set them out and then set them out with the black. That way it's just all there, nice and easy access for you. So when you come up to this last stitch here, you're going to yarn over and start your double crochet just like you normally do then you're gonna do half of that double crochet. So right here we have the two loops left on it and normally we just yarn over and pull it through, but we're gonna go ahead and switch out our yarn right now. So grabbing the next color, go ahead and hold on to that with your thumb. And we're no longer using this blue yarn anymore. We're gonna switch to the next color. So we're gonna yarn over and pull that through, finishing up that double crochet. So as you can see, it is really loose, it needs to be tied off. So I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors here and cut that blue working yarn. Then just do a simple knot here. You can do a double knot if you want to, just make sure not to do it super tight. Make sure that the actual working yarn is still gonna be the correct size and you don't over tighten it. Then just simply continue on with this new color. So chain four, turn your project. There we go. And start to work your double crochet right into the top of that previous double crochet. So for my color change, I did two rows of each color. So I would do two of these rows, then do two rows of black, then switch to the next color, do two more rows. And that is how I kind of build up my sleeves. And I ended up repeating my colors three times because of the fact that I only had these three colors. But if you end up having different colors and different amounts there, obviously that's gonna change and you wanna adjust accordingly. Either way, just make sure that your repeat of your colors ends with the length that you need for your sleeve. Once you've reached the length that you need for your sleeves here, go ahead and cut your working yarn and weave in your ends. So make sure that you are cutting your ends fairly long here, so that way when you weave it in, it's a little bit nicer, a little bit smoother look. If you cut them too short, they're gonna be a little bit bulkier and might not stay as well. Once it's time to assemble it, go ahead and grab your yarn needle and some more black yarn. Then take your back panel, lay the front two panels on top of that. Then starting from the top, Go ahead and match a stitch all the way across the seam on the top here, right where the shoulder is. So do both of the shoulders. Once that's done, grab both of the sleeves, fold them lengthwise, match a stitch all the way up that side. Then with the shoulder portion only done, so we haven't done this portion yet, lay one of the sleeves right next to it so you can kind of see how far it's gonna go down. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and once again, add some yarn onto your yarn hook, match a stitch all the way down here. Once you get down here, flip it over, then match a stitch all the way down the back side here. Once you've done both sides, then go ahead and put the ends together for the back and the front panel and continue in doing your mattress stitch. This way you know you'll have your project nice and even and you won't accidentally end up taking up more spaces or more chains on the bottom portion. After you've attached the body and the sleeves all together, now we're gonna go ahead and work on the ribbing for the cardigan. For the ribbing, I'm just gonna attach this yarn onto my hook once again. Then I'm gonna attach the yarn onto my actual project. So right here, I'm gonna do a slip stitch into the side of this. Perfect. Now, in each chain space here of the mesh stitch, you're gonna place two single crochet. So we're gonna start by chaining one, then doing two single crochet. And if you want to, you can definitely go ahead and work over this tail here. Sometimes it's a lot easier, and then you just have one less end that you have to actually weave in at the end. Now, once I got to the end here, I am gonna change colors because I only have three colors and I wanna use all three for my ribbing. Next, for row number two, I'm gonna chain one and turn my project. Then we're gonna be working in the front post and back post in order to make that nice ribbing look. So for this very first one, we're gonna go ahead and go behind that post and we're gonna yarn over, pull that loop through and finish up that single crochet. So that's gonna be the first one at every edge there. Then we're gonna alternate. Now this one, we're gonna go in front of the post. So right there, we're gonna go from the back in front of it and then we're gonna go right through to the back again, yarn over, pull that all the way through, then finish up the single crochet. 
So keep doing that all the way around. Just go ahead and alternate between a single crochet in the front post and a single crochet in the back post all the way around. And here we have what it should look like. Nice bit of texture here with all the different colors. And it's not gonna be a huge band since I only had three colors. But once again, if you have more colors or fewer colors, obviously the width is gonna change a little bit for your ribbing. So just keep that in mind when you're working this. If you want more, go ahead and alternate the colors a couple of times if you want it to be a little bit thicker. Next, we're gonna do the ribbing for the wrist here. That's gonna make it a little bit tighter. It's gonna cinch right on your wrist and not be quite as big as the sleeves. So once again, grab your yarn here and we're gonna attach it onto the hook. Then finding one of the chain spaces, so this right here, you're gonna insert into that chain space, yarn over and attach the yarn onto your project. Next, in this same chain space, you're gonna do a single crochet. Then in the following chain space, you're gonna place two single crochets. And that's what you're gonna do all the way around, is place two single crochets in each chain one space all the way around. For row number two, you are gonna need a stitch marker here because we're gonna be crocheting in the round. Then finding that first single crochet, go ahead and do a slip stitch to complete the row. And we're gonna chain one here. And for this one, we're gonna start to decrease the size of the sleeve. So for the very first one, we're gonna do a single crochet. Then place that stitch marker. Then in the next two stitches, we're gonna do a single crochet decrease. So insert your hook, pull up a loop. Then in that next stitch, insert your hook as well, pull up a loop. Now you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through, and as you can see, now we're, we went ahead and decreased it by one stitch. So you're gonna do that all the way around, alternating between a single crochet and a single crochet decrease. At this point, go ahead and actually try this on, and if it's still a little bit too loose, repeat that row one more time just to decrease it even more. If everything's fine, then we're gonna move on to rows three through five, and now we're gonna start to actually create that ribbing. So in this very first single crochet, we're gonna start to do the back post and make sure you do place your stitch marker. Then just alternate all the way around in each single crochet with a front post and a back post all the way around creating that ribbing. So that'll be rows three through five. Also, if you want it to be a little bit chunkier or a little longer, you can add rows to it and this is the time to add that row. Otherwise, if you're happy with it after row number five, cut the working yarn and weave in your ends. All right, so that is how you make this killer pride cardigan. I had a ton of fun. So if you had a ton of fun and you really, really love this summertime cardigan, leave a comment down below. Black heart, rainbow, let me know somehow, because I really enjoy the concept of a summer cardigan, and I definitely will be making more. So if you love it and you want to see more, let me know in the comments down below. But that's all I have for you guys today, so thank you so much for hanging out here in the Yarn Dungeon, and I will see you in my next video.